Joseph side couldn't actually just get a crunch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that was that was a million years ago. Yeah, that was pretty busted. So yeah. <laughs> old strategy. As uh, okay, LM's down here, level two. Yeah, and Carrie's been lit on fire already. The heal has come out as Kumiyushi is real dead. That's the flash. That's the rend, and that is Teddy picking up first blood. Way more valuable to take out the Drake. Yeah, some pebbles go down here in the mid lane as Moham. He's gonna rotate over. Doesn't quite find the hand. one last time around, and they're looking to try and repeat that situation as Elam's on vision. There is the Weaver's Wall. Q is going to land, but Elam secures it. Not able to secure the eye just yet, but a cask flies out from Keen. Oh, yeah. And Quantum Freaks have to do their very best to deny it as long as is humanly possible, and they may have to do it forever. As Gumiushi takes a fair bit of damage here, but Fate's Call is going to be traded. Okay, Handshake's going to get a cleanse out as well. As Zayus is down here, there's the kick flash, and there's a surprise Gragas as well, as Gumiushi is not going to go down. Good to save here, because it definitely could have gone another way, is Teddy also almost gets a bailout here. As this is just arrow hits, they Fate's Call, but then this is the call that was incorrect, because they don't know Zayus is down here. Although, could have a reasonably expected. And then, you know, Teddy's just like, he doesn't try to avoid the cast or anything because he wants to get the bailout trade on the Guma. is unsuccessful. Ooh. Suddenly, yep. T1 back on the map, tying up the gold. Absolutely. This is a very scary time. Is That's a nice handshake onto Carrier. Ellen's going to walk on over. This is a really dead ash. There is absolutely nothing you can do there, and Fate is going to collect a kill. For these forced plays, and why is not a base called back in? Well, uh, Q is going to connect there onto Elam as Owner's going to kick him into the wall that Faker prepared earlier. Q goes wide and the Flag and Drag is going to get Elam to safety. So, just as long as you don't force this, Kwangdong, I think you're feeling pretty good about this. Yeah, don't make the old mistake that we were talking about. You know, as Arrow is going to connect, Weaver's Wall comes through as well. Seismic shove, the delivery of the Ari, but she can Spirit Rush. That's going to get her out of the way. All right, as due to map control, and that is definitely good news. As you can see, teleports coming through from Kwandong Freaks. Don't know whether they'll be able to save the turret, but in goes Elim. Hostile takeover coming down as well as the chains. Do not connect. Keen finds himself an arrow, though. The handshake onto Gumiyushi, and he's wiped from the rift. And it was, I mean, it looked really bad for Quano because they lost control of mid, trying to be greedy for the turret push there. Teleport comes through on inner because he doesn't want, he's just scared they're going to lose the turret. But Elim does not hesitate. Hostile takeover plus Cataclysm traps Zayus here. And look at Keen. Steals the arrow away, follow up handshake, delete Skumusi from the map. And yeah, he'll take one with him. But they save a turret, grab two extra kills. This is Bohan's angle here. T1 have no vision on where he is. They are so far first off. And Guan are gonna turn this into a Drake advantage as you can see it alive as well. Oh man, Mohan played that. Oh, yeah, he just teleported and just flashed. So now it should be soul point for Quandong. Yeah, Frank's I think pretty it's just free. Like, I don't think T1 could fight this. Like they want to so desperately. They want to get this. They're like, oh, Draven's supposed to be ahead at this point in the game. This is supposed to be his win condition. Oh, good flash from Mohan, but he's still hit by the Q. Not going to be Ona going in on it just this time around as Kane collects himself an arrow. Can he deny Ona from getting in and stealing this? And of course the answer is absolutely not as Elim. Just gonna get face to face with T1 and does eventually get himself out. Uses the cast to taxi after the flash. The Quantum Freaks kind of just left here looking a little bit silly after they lose the Drake because Owner's smites are too good. Yeah, I mean, Owner's smites are so good. They also lose Ooh. the flash. Weave as well. Uh, sorry, uh, the seismic shove onto Teddy as all oh, willing death is just, it's gonna be a uh, shield bowed. All right, we're clearing out wards where we can on the Quantum Freak side. Is that control ward actually probably going to be very important as Keen's wrapping around himself? Elm also looking to come in. Let's see what the hijack is going to be. Is now Zayas not exactly the priority target as Fate's Call comes on through. Handshake goes wide as Owner is going to have the kick stolen away and used against him. Hostile takeover comes in as well. And now Elm's going to get healed. Zayas now finds himself in the front line, but without too many options. But Moham's going to get picked off. Gumiushi cashes in yet again, and Kwandong Freaks are scattering to the hills. Oh, now, now they're trapped as well by the Weaver's Wall. Looks like Teddy will be able to get away. Does have Flash, and of course his dash there with the auto. Gets over the wall, now has to Flash. Yeah, is able to make it out, but Faker is going to Flash on over. I think Seismic Shove should be up again pretty soon, and there it is. Teddy is going to be trapped in there and will be taken down by Faker this time. getting pushed in is man he has picked up that's a 15, bunch of gold. 79 hat now as well 102 just uh 
just a pretty smooth game yeah. uh, for Faker. As an arrow is going to land this time around, and the wow. follow-up is pretty amazing. But Fate does make it underneath this turret as the cast was not exactly optimal. Doesn't have a GA this game. Doesn't have the power that Kuma has a level up here, an item up. And as Kwangnam, like, you can't even approach the Baron. You have to push waves to try to start something, Guma. Yeah, Cataclysm. And uh, Guma is just going to kill Ellen. He does eventually flash, and the GA is going to go down. And Zayus overextends with Maybe. Weaver's Wall and all sorts well, of I, other things. I, I, mean, I, I can I, understand why they're scared. I can understand why they're scared, but, I, I mean, they should be way more scared of this. Good luck, Kwangnam. You're walking out of Baron now. You could have been the ones turning on it, and you are never going to have this angle now. Keen has hijacked. Let's see how good it is this time. T1 back away. Yeah, well, Weave as well. Going to try and break up the fight as now Keen finds himself completely alone. He has to flash, but is he out of danger as Elim is trying to be the hero and chase after him. Gumiushi now stuck inside the Cataclysm, and he has no flash. The kick comes back as Keen is still alive. Teddy locks down the first kill. Hostile takeover is exactly that right now as Carrier trying to be a standing AD carry, but he doesn't have the items for it. And oh, there no. is the chain that comes back from Keen. Just amazingly played. Carrier, I don't think he can do this by himself as the oh arrow will come God. in, but it doesn't do enough. Does. It isn't seen here. Could look for Gumo, still doesn't have flash. Over the wall! Uh, not going to be able to get there as he was inside the hex gate, but can they win the team fight is going to be the question as Elam going down very, very low. Gumiushi just fighting in the back of the pit. It's the Thunderdome, it's the Coliseum, and he's doing so much damage! Moham's now going to have to walk this one off as T1 obliterate the team fight. Doesn't have flash, but he's got a cleanse, and Guma does 8,000 damage in this team fight as Fate tried as he might to try to get that backline kill, take out the AD carry. That was the name of the game. Elm took flash, took him out there, prevented the Baron, but at the end of the day, they still had to force a fight into a choke point. The Thunderdome that T1 set up, and that's the last kill of the game as T1 will march down to take what's theirs. A very close series, one that lived up to the revenge storyline we set here as Pungdung won it in the first round, Robin, but T1 will take the narrow 2-1 victory in the end. What a series, Atlas. Yeah. They faced T1 in the first round last season. But maybe, maybe this will be a different time as uh, the, the former T1 players in Teddy and Elam had desperately tried to find some of the angles. They did in multiple occasions. The fact that they were... <laughs> <laughs> they managed to shut him down. The one previous to that as uh, Gary was thinking about it and he's like, oh, he is. And I think that uh, we also need to recognize the fact that Zayas did break the losing streak for Gragas and didn't break his own winning streak on Gragas, which uh, is 100%. Uh, the man is pretty good on Gragas, as it turns out, everyone. So, so, so little follow-up damage here for Fates and Gage because, you know, Teddy's playing Callista. They don't have the ability to lock him down. They don't have a good ultimate to get on top of him for Silas.